And so here we are. This is the right ascension change versus time over a year and a half, one year from here to here. And the scale for the right ascension change, those big tick marks are two milli arc seconds, two thousandths of a second of arc. And you can see the error bars, which are on there, are pretty hard to see. Those error bars are down in the 50 micro arc second range. And so you can see we're going to get a very accurate parallax out of this. It turns out uh, all three stars that we observed, actually the fourth one we got three epochs, but not four, um, gave us a very nice parallax. Uh, converted to a distance, it's 414 parsecs with an uncertainty of about 2%, 7 parsecs. So the Orion Nebula cluster is 414 parsecs away. That's about 10% smaller than astronomers had thought, which actually has very interesting implications for the masses, ages, luminosities of very young stars. Okay. Most of the records I've read said about 1,500 light years, so that's about mm -hmm. 1,200 light uh, years. Divide by 3.26, yeah. so divide by 3 would be 500, 480. Yeah. It might be. The numbers that were in the literature basically range from about 450 to 480 parsecs. For mm -hmm. this. Is that, of course, there have been measurements that have a much bigger range, but those were the ones that people thought were the best ones. Okay, now let's look a little more distantly into the Milky Way. Uh, this is a nice uh, infrared picture of a region of active star formation in the outer galaxy, uh, taken with the Spitzer Space Telescope. And right down in here where the arrow points is a region of very active, massive star formation. It's called W3OH. And we've actually measured the parallax to this star forming region. And this is an interesting one because before this measurement, there were two ways to estimate the distance to this object. It's in a very dust obscured region. So optically, optically you can't see this. It's, you have to go to the infrared to see through the dust. Um, so there are two ways people, astronomers had estimated distances to this object. One is called a kinematic distance. And that is you make a model of the Milky Way. You say it's a disk that's spinning. And, and, and you assume, for example, everything in the disk is spinning at the same speed, which is pretty close to what, what is happening. Um, then you can look at it, you measure a spectral line, a Doppler shift of a spectral line, and you get a velocity difference between our observation point on the sun and this star. And from that, you can get a distance if you believe your galactic model. And there, there's some complications, which I won't go into, but this kinematic distance from a Doppler shift and a model of the Milky Way gave 4.3 kiloparsecs, 4,300 parsecs for this object, which would put it in one of these outer spiral arms of the galaxy. <coughs> However, there's also, if you, you can't see stuff in here, but if you go a few degrees away, you, you can find clusters of O stars, hot young stars. Uh, that you can actually see visibly because the dust has been dispersed around these, these young stars. And so you can measure a, a distance of these stars photometrically. Basically, you measure its spectrum, determine what type it is, from that how luminous it, it is intrinsically, and then you see how luminous, luminous it appears to be, and then you know how far away it is. And so photometric distances gave about half the distance, so there's quite a controversy for, for this. Let me show you parallax data for this object. So here I'll show you all three panels, the curly key, uh, the right ascension versus time, the declination versus time, that has the proper motion in there. Remove the proper motion, you look at the right, and now you see over about uh, one year, uh, the right ascension started up at a half a milli arc second, went down sinusoidally, went back up, and the declination, this is one object where we actually tried to measure the declination also, because it's very high, it's plus 60 degrees declination. So it goes pretty much overhead in the north. Here's a declination versus time parallax signature. Those two sinusoids have to be out of phase by 90 degrees. Because you, when you put them together, it has to make the elliptical orbit of the Earth. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is a half a milli arc second from here to here. So the parallax is about a half a milli arc second, as you can see. The error bars are getting much better even than the Orion object. And uh, the parallax we measured for this is about 0.512 milli arc seconds. It's the amplitude of this, this sinusoid. Now with an uncertainty of 10 
micro arc seconds. Now, if you can read 10 micro arc seconds, I think you can read a book from the moon. Okay, you invert this number, 0.5 becomes 2, or 1.95 kiloparsecs. So this, this object it is at about 2,000 parsecs from us, with about 2% uncertainty. So here, here, this does resolve this conundrum about whether the kinematic or photometric distance to this uh, object was correct. Here's sort of a schematic, an artist's conception of what the Milky Way might look like. You'll see a few more of these in the upcoming. Here's the center of the Milky Way. You're sort of looking down from the north pole of the Milky Way. So it's a disk, you're looking down from the north. Uh, the sun is up here. And this is the direction of W30H. <laughs> if, if it were at 4.3 kiloparsecs, it would be out here in what is thought to be a, an outer spiral arm, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. The photometric distance placed it in what's called the Perseus spiral arm here. And the parallax distance uh, gave that number with very high accuracy. So basically, the, the kinematic distance is way off. The photometric distance is about 15% off, but that's within a, mm -hmm. what you would expect for the uncertainties of photometric distances. So that's good. And so we know this, this object, for example, is in the Perseus spiral arm. Now, why was the photometric distance so wrong? Remember I said you need to measure a, a velocity, a relative velocity of an object with respect to us, a Doppler curve. <coughs> well, when we measure parallax, uh, we measure not only the Earth's effect going around the sun, we measure the proper motion. I sort of said that's something you know we throw away, but actually it's quite interesting. Uh, if you measure the motion on the sky, and you do it at very high accuracy, uh, if you know the distance, you can convert that angular motion to a linear motion, speeds, kilometers per second. We have Doppler shifts of spectral light, <coughs> so we know the speed going away from us or toward us. So we have three-dimensional velocity information. Also, we know the coordinates of the source, that's two dimensions, and we know its distance, the parallax. So we know three dimensions of spatial information. We know exactly where it is and exactly how it's moving in three dimension. And so what we can do is find out if you transform to a, a rotating system, rotating with the galaxy, at, at the position of W3OH there, uh, would it be going in a circle or not? We can actually calculate that. And this arrow gives you the peculiar or non-circular component to the motion. So it's not going in a circular orbit around the center of the Milky Way. It's got a big component of motion, about 22 kilometers per second, sort of comparable to the Earth's orbital speed. And that just happens to be aimed almost at the sun. So it shows up almost totally as a Doppler shift. <laughs> so you're getting the wrong velocity to compare with the model to get a kinematic distance. So that's why the kinematic distance is so wrong. Here. OK, so here's sort of a summary of the measurements we've made so far over the past couple of years. We've measured about 18 parallaxes to regions where massive stars are forming across the Milky Way. I've superposed it again on this artist conception of the Milky Way by Robert Hurt. It's a very, very nice artist conception, but we don't know if it's right or not. So, and I stretched his image until it sort of fit our data. So that there are two sources that appear to be associated with some outer spiral arm. There are about five sources in the W3 general direction in what's called the Perseus spiral arm. Um, the sun is right here. And there's what's thought to be a local arm, it's called the Orion arm, or a spur between the outer Perseus arm and the next arm inward. And then we have various other objects we measured all the way in near the galactic center, actually near to the end of the bar, the stuff through the bar there. So we're just starting to trace the spiral structure of the Milky Way. And what we're going to try to do over the next five years is observe several hundred more objects in the Milky Way and essentially trace out all these spiral arms. Now, these will be hard down here because those are, have to be observed from the southern hemisphere. So the northern hemisphere...